My group's research is interested in improving our understanding of earthquakes and fault zones in California and beyond. We are generally interested in using tiny earthquakes to illuminate aspects that we wouldn't be able to see otherwise. And to be able to detect these events, we use and develop techniques from machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, to extract these signals that are so small that human beings can't feel them, but are at the very lowest levels of the, the noise of our instrumentation. My name is Zachary Ross. I'm an assistant professor of geophysics and William H. Hertz scholar at Caltech. We're using machine learning to extract information from the seismic data. We've developed algorithms for building seismicity catalogs, which are basically databases of earthquakes, when they're happening, where they're happening, how large they are, and so forth. The events give us insights into what is happening beneath the surface. And each event is basically a point measurement of where a fault occurs, but the collection of them light up the subsurface in a way that you wouldn't necessarily be able to see otherwise with extremely precise resolution. And so that's giving us new insights into what these structures look like, which can inform the physical modeling of these processes and characterize various systems. When you add in more tiny ones, they start to fill in the gaps between all the larger ones. They tell you a more complete story about how the sequence is evolving and provide more constraints on the physical processes that are responsible for the sequence's evolution. There have been a several different things that have come out in the last few years from our research using these types of technologies. One of them is that a lot of the, the seismicity that we see in Southern California, which means the daily counts of earthquakes that are happening in some of the most active regions, are turning out to be from different processes than we originally had attributed them to. For example, in the southernmost part of the state, there has been a lot of seismic activity that's been known about for at least 100 years at this point, and a lot of the models for the earthquake activity in this area are based on the idea that this very high seismicity rate is just traditional tectonic based seismicity. But it turns out that a lot of what is happening are not tectonically driven at all and are being composed of sequences that we call earthquake swarms, which may be instead associated with the release of fluids in the subsurface that would be responsible for driving these earthquakes that we're seeing. This is important because how we choose to attribute the source of these events is important for how you characterize the hazard in those areas. My research is a very natural extension of the legacy of the Seismolab. Most of the basic elements of seismicity, the earthquake catalogs, the magnitudes in them, the locations, and all these kinds of things, that was pioneered here about a century ago. And so I consider our work to really be very much in line with the ideas that many of the distinguished professors here worked on. I think it's really good to be able to train students about just geoscience, geophysics in general. The Earthquake Fellows Program gets students familiar with being on a college campus for probably the first time. It allows us to give back and to add a little bit to the, the next generation of scientists. My favorite part of the work is that there's just always a new challenge for us. We're looking at a very narrow snapshot of time and the Earth is not a constant process. It's always changing, it's extremely dynamic. And so every year there could be new events unfolding or processes that just look nothing like anything we've ever seen before. 